Welcome to the Nautilus Files. In this episode, we're going to talk about the silver-haired villain you love to hate, Miss Harmony Coble of Severance. Miss Coble, for all intents and purposes, operates as the face of Lumen to the audience. You can think of her and the entity that is Lumen as being somewhat interchangeable. So I'm going to approach this analysis from that perspective. Let's dive in. But first, fair warning, this video will discuss the character to a degree of detail that will no doubt cover major story plot lines. Go watch Severance and then come back and check out this video. No worries, I'll still be here when you get back. Otherwise, enter at your own risk. So what do we know about Miss Kobo? Her general demeanor is often aloof, cold and detached, but at times she can almost appear to be an empathizing human being. She keeps you guessing, but there is no doubt that even when she exhibits that kind of exterior, it is camouflaged for a cold, ruthless personality that is more than willing to do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Interesting, it's almost kind of like a corporation. I think most people would be fine with characterizing Harmony Coble as evil. The thing is, evil exists for a reason. Or what I mean to say is, there's a story behind how evil comes to be. We can't know the full answer to that question yet, because we're only given a small window into Harmony's past. We can, however, look at her actions in the story to paint a picture of who she is and speculate. And you know me, I live to speculate. Cobalt's relationship with Lumen is like that of a cult member. This is probably not unique to her, but we certainly get the sense that she isn't pretending when she recites texts from the handbook or sings the creepiest hymn I've ever heard. Progress, knowledge, show no fear. Here, chosen one, here. For Koble, her dedication to work has taken on a religiosity, or more to the point, a cultish reverence for Lumen that kept me puzzled. I have my theories as to why that is, but we'll get into that later. Koble's fanatic loyalty to Lumen runs deep, but that loyalty is not reciprocal. The board that runs Lumen communicates with Kobol through a proxy while listening over an intercom. The amount of awkward in these exchanges is incredible. The board won't even dignify her with a greeting or respond to any of her questions. This should sound familiar to us Audis, especially if you have experience in the corporate world because it parallels the real life relationship that often exists between workers and those at the top of the pyramid, the decision makers. The irony here is that despite Kobol's fervent deference, Lumen treats her just as coldly as she treats her own staff. There's a lesson in there somewhere. Can't quite put my finger on it. Okay, put on your detective hats. My first bit of speculation. One of the things that kept bothering me about this character was the inconsistent details she shared about her past. She seems to be telling two contradictory stories about herself whenever she does manage to give us any clues. For example, after Mark completely scuffs Helly's orientation, Kobold delivers this cold AF line when dressing him down. You know my mother was an atheist. She used to say that there was good news and bad news about hell. The good news is, hell is just the product of a morbid human imagination. The bad news is, whatever humans can imagine, they can usually create. Notice that there she says her mother was an atheist. Now, in having a conversation with Audi Mark in front of their homes, she says, You know my mother was a Catholic. She used to say it takes the saints eight hours to bless a sleeping child. So now her mom was Catholic? Which one is it? It wouldn't make sense for her to lie here since neither severed portion of Mark's psyche would be aware of the contradiction. Although it's still possible she's just being intentionally deceitful in order to be careful. Now I would have left things there. Really I would have. But there's a brief moment in the control room where we see her name listed as one of the severed people in the system and her entry is marked as deactivated. Credit to the Redditor that found this, by the way. This implies that she has a chip in her head and that it's not active. It could be that her chip is activated when Lumen needs it to be due to her position and responsibilities. Either way, she must know that she is severed. The question is when and why. Suffice it to say, this fact might explain her being confused about her own personal history. I'm going to go ahead and guess she was severed at an early age in life. She may even be one of the first people severed. I say this because of the marked difference in her clothing and behavior when she's inside her home. You know, the pigtails, the old timey nightgown and such. It's almost as if she's reverting to childhood. That behavior doesn't quite match up with her personality and presentation at work. She seems to have two competing personalities going on, but I guess we'll have to wait and find out. One of the most practical ways to look at Koble's character is to examine the way she interacts with Mark, the main protagonist. Koble's manipulation of Mark 
and his wife is very interesting because it tells us how she sees people, especially those of the severed variety. I think it's quite possible that Miss Coble sees innies as less than human. They are, to her, just tools that exist to satisfy a singular purpose. This is parallel with how people are often viewed from a corporate perspective, as evident by the struggles we see on the part of the working class in real life society. Coble acts almost as a herder for the MDR crew, and she no doubt treats all severed employees under her purview in like manner. For example, it would make sense that she is the one that called for Bert's early retirement because things were getting complicated with Bert and Irving. Lumen doesn't tolerate any of that love stuff. With the help of her band of merry men in Grainer and Melchick, Koble tries to maintain a firm grip on the activities of everyone on the floor, but her interest in Mark goes a bit further than that. Koble seems to treat Artie Mark with a great deal more care and concern. This is true despite her intentions still being nefarious in nature. You get the sense that her feelings are genuine at times, but she walks that line so well that it's almost always a mystery as to what she's really feeling or thinking. She inserts herself into Mark's Audi's life. This behavior goes beyond the bounds of her job description and violates Lumen Company policy. In other words, if they found out she was doing this, she'd be in huge trouble. I think this is the product of her own morbid curiosity getting the better of her. More speculation incoming. My theory is that she wants to know if Mark can recall any part of his outside life. Perhaps she doesn't believe that severance works absolutely. Maybe she wants to push the limits by doing her own experiments and observations to see if she can break Mark's severance. This would explain why she keeps putting Miss Casey into the picture, to see if Mark can remember her. Obviously, a moral person would find this irreprehensible and unnecessarily cruel. But again, she doesn't see innies as people. Innies are a product, and the severance floor is just an elaborate experiment. Like when your biology teacher had you cut open that dead frog in high school just without the funky chemical smells. When I thought about this part of the story, it got me thinking that perhaps this is the entire reason why Mark is in MDR. Maybe MDR employees are special cases that need to have their severance tested for integrity. Why else would Lumen tell Mark his wife is gone, but then have a severed version of her work on the same floor? And all that busy work that they do at the computer is probably actually some kind of self-maintenance of their own severed states. This might explain why only the user can recognize the scary numbers and not the co-workers. When Kobol decided to retire Miss Casey, okay, well, let's be real. Getting fired as a severed employee is essentially death because life in Lumen is all you have. So when they finally walk out that door, that's it. You're done. Finito. So Coble firing Casey is particularly cold hearted because she's taking Miss Casey, a.k.a. Gemma, away from Mark for the second time. It takes a heart of stone to do something like that. And you got to be wondering what is going on with Miss Casey's Audi, by the way. I mean, does she even have an Audi? That's a video for another time. Maybe we'll talk about that in season two. OK, it's about that time. Let's talk about one of the most important scenes in Severance when it comes to getting to an understanding of Harmony Koval. I'm guessing you already know which one it is. It's the scene where she comes home after being fired from Lumen and she has an absolute meltdown. Now, I have to admit, I giggled like a schoolgirl during this entire scene. I was so happy to see her get canned, but then they hit us with this scene. So much going on here. The main thing that caught my attention and probably the most important thing to take away from this scene is the breathing tube. And that breathing tube seems to have her mother's name on it. Now, it's not the first time we see it, we do see it in the beginning of one of the other episodes. I think it was episode six. I think the writers are telling us that her mother's death has something to do with Lumen. That much we can almost say for certain. There's a bunch of possibilities here. One is that Miss Coble was severed to deal with her mother's death. Possible. It could be that Lumen messed up somehow and it proved fatal for the mother. And that could be the reason why Harmony has a job at Lumen. Maybe they felt obligated to give Harmony a job. And it could be possible that Harmony is seeking some kind of weird long game revenge. Another possibility is that Harmony is the illegitimate love child of an affair with an Egan. So Harmony sees herself as belonging to the Egan family, but of course she's kept on the outside because she doesn't have Egan as a last name. It sure would explain her loyalty to Lumen. So yeah, that, that shrine creeped me out. The main thing we should take away from the scene is that Harmony has a very deep connection to Egan, not just as an employee, but they've had a very big impact on her life in the past. We'll find out more about it later, I'm sure, but it's very, very interesting and I'm curious to find out what happened there. So back to the subject of loyalty. Let's talk about how the season ends. After being fired, Coble should have been done with any and all things Lumen. But when Mark invites her out for Rickon's book reading, she decides to come with. Remember what we said about her sometimes seeming like she actually likes Mark? This is one of those cases because she didn't have to do this. But anyway, while at the function, she insists on Mark quitting Lumen. Another act that surprised me. I even thought they were going to hit us with a plot twist and Harmony was going to help MDR take down Lumen. But uh, no, that wasn't to be. The minute she realizes that Mark is an any, 
She flips right back into Luminite cultist mode and sounds the alarm. She even drives all the way to another event where Audi Heli is supposed to speak to stop what is now any Heli from blowing Lumen up Yoink. on the national stage. This kind of surprised me, which is great because villains are supposed to catch the audience off guard. Harmony Coble exhibits her core nature here, which is that she pretty much has zero respect for enemies as human beings, even though she herself is severed. That's a special kind of evil. She's a good little cultist who will do the bidding of the Egans, even if it means she'll suffer for it. Lumen uses Kobol, extracts what it wants from her, and throws her away. And she still puts Lumen on a pedestal. Man, there's a lesson in there somewhere. I'm sure of it. That's it for this episode. This character was really fun to discuss. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to say thanks to all the subs that have joined recently. I do appreciate you choosing to hang out with me. Until the next video drops, stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.